Look at almost every cool computer setup and tell me what's the most boring part about them. The monitor stands. Well, that ends today. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More about them later in the video. We have changed the layout of the studio. It's finally a studio. Daniel and I moved all 3D printers to our new place. And now I don't have to edit and film in between the noisy 3D printers. And I can finally breathe in some healthy air. And I've bought a second monitor to improve my workflow. But these speakers are standing in the way. And I take audio very seriously. And therefore when Hollyland reached out to me with the question if I would be willing to test out their newest lav mic, the Lark M1, I couldn't say no. Funny thing is that I had an email conversation while I was on the airplane to Merv. What a world we live in. The good news is that they have sent an extra pair for me to give away. And I will show you by the end of this video how that goes. So the only possibility we have is to add a second monitor on top. And there we get to the root of today's problem. For this configuration you need a separate monitor stand. Although I was able to find them online. They were or very expensive, flimsy or plain ugly. And then I realized I do have a couple of 3D printers, so I might as well design my own. And while I'm at it, I can also incorporate new features. I can over-engineer the crap out of this thing. We can make the coolest monitor stand in existence. We can add modular interface ports, USB, Ethernet, HDMI, so I don't have to use a mirror in order to find the, the, the port to place, to, to, to connect a USB device. What the fuck? Why, why, why are there, why are these interfaces at the back of your monitor? Who, who thinks that this is a good idea? We can add RGB, a brushed stainless steel, two millimeter thick tube. Well, we, we need to somehow add holes in here. Luckily we've got a small conventional milling machine at work where I was able to machine this myself. Stainless steel is not the easiest material to work with, so only do this if you're experienced or are under supervision. With a bit of lube and a small end mill, well it, it basically turned out pretty good. Before you're thinking, well I, I'm, I cannot do this, I don't have this, I don't have this equipment. I, quite soon realized that I was, I could also, instead of using this fancy stainless steel tube uh, vacuum cleaner rod, it would also be possible. And you don't have to guide the wires through it. It's the nicest solution, but you can also just route them along the back, just like every monitor stand does. But now we have to add the, the foot itself. Well, first we have to 3D print it, and that's easier said than done. And I can show you that in our new 3D printing room. Welcome in our new 3D printing room. This is the top part. This is almost 700 grams, but the uh, Y axis shifted. And this part printed well, but warped. This is printed out of transparent PTG from 3 d makers. And they are sending a new spool right away for me to be able to print this part. Without this, no video. And this is the printer we are using. This is the Optimus P1. This has a huge build platform. It's 60 by 60 centimeters and one meter 10 high. I've got a lot of interesting projects for this thing in mind. And this, this project also helps with gaining a bit more experience with this printer before printing the huge parts. And it's a good thing because I already had to upgrade it. Um, I had some problems with the extruder. Uh, the extruder was leaking. So I added the E3D Revo. Mounted that on the BiQ Hermit Craft. It fits perfectly. The Y-axis started skipping. So, well, I wasn't very happy with how the um, the cable chains were going. So I basically took this whole stuff apart and uh, designed some stuff for it. So now the cable chains are going, well, from what I think a logical way. So this is a 12 hour print and that's the bottom part. And this is more than a 24 hour print. 
I'm printing it with a 0.6 mm nozzle at the 0.3 mm layer height. Well, fingers crossed that this thing is going to turn out great. And then we have to wait for the extra spool from three of the makers. And then we can print the rest and put everything together. While we're waiting for the print to finish, this is a great moment to talk about our sponsor Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform on which you can build your own website. It has several award-winning templates, so you can just select a template, modify it to your needs, and you basically are good to go. And it's looking professional. So if you want to start blogging, is that still a thing? Or if you want to create a portfolio, then um, Squarespace is the way to go. You can also sell goods. It, also supports local pickup points, which is quite interesting. It's not difficult to make a Squarespace website, but if you don't have the time or simply don't want to do it, you can also hire an expert. Chances are that it will look even better because, well, they, they are the expert. But the good thing is that in the long run, you don't have to rely on that expert because, well, it's so straightforward. Once the website is built and you want to modify something, you can do it yourself. So start building a website today by going to squarespace.com for a free trial. And once your website is ready for launch, go to squarespace.com slash prop printing and you get 10% off of your website or domain on there. Now let's see if the print's finished. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, the parts are finished. It was quite a lot of work to remove the supports, but I added all inserts and well, it turned out pretty good. I've got a box full of goodies here that has to be placed in there. I'm using this Corsair Lightning Note Pro RGB. This is normally used within a case. You have to connect it to your SATA power. But I've found a very simple USB to SATA connector. I can basically with one USB connector power this whole thing. People familiar with my designs know that I don't give myself a lot of extra space. The idea is that this LED strip can be placed um, below this where this insert is placed. Here at the front I made room for these Kingston Workflow SD card readers. It's a pretty tight fit so the docking function probably will be a um, permanent solution. Okay, it is a very tight fit, but it fits. I've got these panel connectors which go inside of these holes. Before I'm going to press in this tube, I'm going to plug this in to see if the RGB works and if those card readers work. Fuck yeah! Okay, yesterday I went on till quite late in the evening and I realized that I screwed up a little. I've ordered the wrong connectors and the cables I've had in mind for them, they are way too short. I have no idea what I was thinking. Like, ah, well, this, this, this is long enough. For now, these fronts are, um, well, dummies. And, um, well, this is... Uh... So, new day, new chances. And, well, let's... Um, Mount the monitor to this tube. Fortunately, most monitors have these visa mounts, so I've designed this mount for it. The nice thing about this monitor is that it has several interfaces, and among them, this Ethernet port and these will be routed to the front of the foot.
Okay, it is a bit full. Okay, let's put this thing upright and see how stable this actually is. Well, it, it feels pretty good. I forgot one thing. I've made these things out of TPU 60A and they can be pressed in here. So, I've got some feet. I hope it doesn't topple over. Okay. Okay. This is way more stable than I expected. Nice! This is so sick! Look at that! No cables, black with transparent white. <laughs> so cool! Oh shit! Tering zo even in de knoop. Oké. Ah, fuck. <laughs> I've connected all lights through DMX. Oh, the DMX interface is a COM port. <laughs> I plug the USB in a different port. The cool thing about being dark is that when I turn on a monitor, it should look epic. First, the top monitor. When I turn on this bottom monitor, then everything should light up. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> Damn. And now everything is boring except for my monitor stand. It looks so cool. It's so nice to have a SD card reader here at the front. I can just plug in my SD cards. I can copy the files. So I can start editing. And while I'm editing, I can just look at, the, um, at my prints and uh, Minchin sent me their uh, remote 3D printer controller. It's quite interesting and it, and especially now when our 3D printers are in a different room, it's ideal that you can control and monitor them. Another reason why I'm using two monitors is because I moved all audio to Reaper, which is a digital audio workstation. And if I'm going to run the video that you're watching right now, then everything. now I can monitor everything in Reaper while I'm editing. Talking about audio brings us to the giveaway of this video, the Lark M1 by Hollyland. And in order for you to win this, it's quite simple. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment why you want this microphone. I'm going to send this package to the best comment. I hope you like this computer related content because I've got an awesome idea for a computer case. Of course it must be a bit more interesting than this plain black case. This, that's an idea for the future. If you don't want to miss that then subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you've liked this video and uh, see you in the next one. Bye!